Hello everyone, my name is Andres Guerra. I work in the Catholic University of Peru. And today I will be presenting uh, our results uh, concerning the luminescence activation of turbine dope ITO thin films and their impact on the host optical and electrical properties. Our interest in introducing rare earth dope rare earths in TCLs is to introduce a new additional property, luminescence, to an already multifunctional material without compromising their optical transparency and electrical conductivity. We believe that this might open a wide range of applications in light emitting devices, uh, in solar cells as downshift and up, up down conversion layer systems, as well as um, gas sensors. We have grown our samples by radio frequency magnetron sputtering in a way that we are able to obtain samples with different turbine concentrations in a single deposition process. Additionally, we, re we realized by experimentation that in order to activate the, the turbine related luminescence by post deposition thermal treatments, it was necessary to cool down the substrates during the deposition process. We performed this using a closed cycle a cooling system and and put the temperature of the substrate down to 10 uh, degrees Celsius. Also, we study and characterize uh, ITO films without any terbion grown in a similar fashion. If you are more, if you're interested in details concerning these uh, results, please visit uh, the abstract ID uh, and the work presented by Miguel Pinheiro. Here I'm showing you the elemental concentration versus the turbine concentration of the samples we, we have grown. And we will be focusing on these, these samples between this concentration range for this, this concentration range of turbine, due to the fact that for higher concentrations, we will uh, have the concentration quenching effect of the luminescence. After the position, ITO films grown in the, under these conditions exhibit a polycrystalline structure, whilst ITO doped with terbium exhibit an amorphous structure. After annealing, uh, ITO uh, films uh, increase their grain size, whilst the terbium doped version uh, crystallized. We were able to obtain the luminescence from the terbium ions embedded in this host by post-deposition thermal treatments and under this excitation wavelength. Here I'm showing you the luminescence spectra for three different annealing temperatures of a sample with 1.5 atomic percent of terbium. We are able to identify the typical electronic transitions related to the terbium ions. And interestingly, we see that the 5D4 to 7F2 transition increases in intensity for this annealing temperature. This is quite an unexpected behavior. Concerning the interacted emission intensity, we see that the emission intensity associated to terbium increases with annealing temperature till certain uh, temperature and then it decreases again. A similar behavior uh, is observed for the host related emission of the same sample. We believe that this variation here is associated to uh, an effective competition between the recombination and subsequent energy transfer to host related uh, states and turbulent states. We believe this because when we monitor the emission of an undoped ITO sample, we see that the host emission increases with the needing temperature meaning that we might be activating other recombination paths and uh, luminescence centers associated to the host. For comparison purposes, I'm showing you here the color or the apparent color in this color space, CA1931. And we see that for higher annealing temperatures, there is a shift to the red, which is again unexpected for terbium ions. Concerning the concentration quenching effect I mentioned earlier, here I'm showing you the luminescence spectra for samples and needed at 550 degrees and for different terbium concentrations. If we look at the integrated intensity, we see that in fact, after uh, a concentration above 
2.3 atomic percent of terbium, the emission intensity is quenched dramatically. This is known as the concentration quenching effect. In order to probe uh, the potential excitation mechanisms between the host or any transfer mechanism between the host and the terbium ions, we perform thermal um, temperature dependent photoluminescence measurements on a sample grown with 1.5 atomic percent terbium and annealed at uh, 550 degrees Celsius. So here I'm showing you the emission as intensity versus wavelength for different sample temperatures. And on the right, I'm showing you the integrated emission intensity associated to terbium and associated to the host. We see that when we increase the sample temperature, we lose uh, terbium emission and enhance the host emission. From this data, we perform an arrhenius plot and we are able to identify two activation energies associated to the thermal quenching process. So we believe that the excitation mechanism or energy transfer mechanism from the host to the rare earth takes place, takes place by um, the formation of bound excitons to rare earth, is, rare earth structure isovalent traps. So after excitation and the formation of a, an electron hole pair, um, the electron hole pair will form an exciton bound to a uh, rare earth or rare earth cluster because these uh, rare earths can form clusters of two, three, or higher dimensions or higher sizes. These clusters will create a, a potential that will attract holes or excitons, and they will be bound to, to, this, to this potential. So after recombination or the annihilation of this exciton, energy will be transferred to the rare earth, and therefore uh, the rare earth is excited to a higher uh, level. So there are two models to, to treat these um, rare uh, structure isovalent traps. One is the Costres later model and the other one, is, other one is the spherical potential well model. We have used these two models and the um, activation energies we obtained earlier to calculate and predict order other activation energies or binding energies, assuming that these activation energies are actually the binding energies of these excitons to these rare isolent traps. Unfortunately, we were able only to measure two activation energies, and from them, we, are, we calculate the binding energies for clusters of larger sizes. Our results suggest or the, the results obtained from both models, the cost stress later and spherical uh, potential, are in agreement to what we actually could expect from this material. However, we still um, we're still studying and um, trying to find if we can measure additional um, activation energies, which can perhaps match the calculated ones. In fact, there is another work we are presenting in this uh, conference by Paul John Top on terbium dope aluminum zinc oxide, in which there we were able to identify four activation energies, and they match pretty well with the theory. So concerning the optical properties, we measure the optical band gap and Urbach energy, and in this plot I'm just uh, relating them. So here we have band gap versus the Urbach energy for samples with different terbium concentrations samples with a uh, terbium concentration but for different annealing treatments and uh, samples without any terbium uh, but for different annealing treatments and we observe the same trend the, the band gap increases when we increase the urban energy we believe that this relation is actually associated to the fact that when we introduce terbium ions for instance or when we perform annealing treatments to the sample we activate uh, charge defects uh, like oxygen vacancies among others, and therefore we increase the band gap by means of the optical band gap by means of the bursting mode shift. So when we activate these charged effects, so we form new defects by annealing treatments or the inclusion of terbium ions in the host, we are also increasing the Urbach energy of the system. Also, we perform uh, four probe measurements or Van der Poel measurements 
on, as, uh, on samples uh, with no thermal treatment, but for different uh, terpene concentrations. And we see that for a small amount, of course, we, we, we observe uh, resistivity larger to the typical resistivity one obtains on ITO, in particular due to the growth conditions. We, we grow these samples by cooling down the substrate holder. But very interestingly, we see also in agreement with the optical uh, analysis that for a, a small amounts of terbion um, in, the, in the host, there is a, a reduction of the electri electrical resistivity. Here on the right, I'm showing you the electrical resistivity of a sample with 2.3 atomic percent of terbion versus the annealing temperature. And on the red curve, we are, I'm showing you the evolution of the electrical resistivity with an alien temperature of a sample without any terbion grown on similar conditions. So again, if you're interested in checking the optical properties and electronic properties of ITO grown under these conditions, you can check this work. And if you are interested on uh, learning about the energy transfer mechanisms in terbion dope aluminum zinc oxide films, you can check this other work, which is also presented in this in this conference. So thank you very very much for your time and for this opportunity.